Hi, this is the CAD CAM Lessons channel and in this video I'll tell you a few words about constraints in sketches in FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a completely free 3D modeling program that anyone can use and in FreeCAD we can, for example, create 3D models for 3D printing or 3D models for other purposes, whether production or hobby related. Before we start, just a quick note, you'll find links to my FreeCAD mini courses in the description. It's also a great way to support the channel. Now, let's get started. And now we'll move to FreeCAD and I'll tell you a few words about constraints in sketches. And this is quite an important issue because when it comes to creating 3D models in 3D CAD systems, very often we build 3D models in such a way that they are created based on a 2D sketch. And for such a 2D sketch to be correct and resistant to accidental damage, it's worth properly constraining such a sketch. That is, it's worth establishing relationships between the geometries of the sketch so that you don't accidentally change the shape or position of the sketch. And when it comes to creating 3D models based on 2D sketches in FreeCAD, we do this in the part design module. And to start a new project in the part design module, we select the parametric part command. And now we've been switched to this module. And here we start by creating a sketch and now we've been switched to the sketcher module where we create 2D geometry. And I'll now create two geometries. I'll create a rectangle and I'll create a circle. At this moment, these geometries have no relationship. They're not connected either with each other or with the origin of the coordinate system. We have information here that this sketch is not constrained and that we have seven degrees of freedom here. Of course, based on such a sketch, we can create a 3D model this sketch is correct for creating a 3D model, and we can create a 3D model based on such a sketch. But first of all, this sketch doesn't have defined dimensions, so I don't even know what the dimensions of this box are. Of course, we can check this. If we click on a line, we have information here about the length of the line, but we didn't specify this. We just freely created this sketch. Now, if I introduce some changes, also notice that I'm doing this freely, that I can freely change the shape and position of these geometries. This has been changed, and now the length of this solid has been changed. And something like this in 3D CAD systems is not entirely correct, because 3D CAD systems are rather intended for 3D modeling of parts with precisely defined dimensions, so that, for example, based on a modeled part, some physical object can be made. And in the case of such modeling, we very often care about precisely defined dimensions. Because, for example, such a part must work with another element, and then dimensions matter. And this is where constraints will be helpful. And we have two types of constraints. We have dimensional constraints and geometric constraints. When it comes to dimensional constraints, we simply specify specific dimensions of geometry. For example, I'll specify the length of this side as 100 millimeters. Now I'll specify the length of this side as 70 millimeters, and I'll specify the diameter of this circle as 20 millimeters. And now these geometries already have strictly defined dimensions. Notice that I can no longer change the dimensions of this rectangle, but I can still change the position of this rectangle. And when it comes to the position of geometry, we can also define the position using dimensions. We can add dimensional constraints and we can specify specific distances from the origin of the coordinate system. To do this, we select these two points and choose the constraint and specify specific distances from the coordinate system. And now the rectangle already has a strictly defined position and strictly defined dimensions. And the color of the rectangle has changed to green. And this means that this geometry is already fully constrained. Its position and dimensions are already strictly defined in the sketch. As for this circle, this circle has a defined diameter. I can't freely change the diameter of this circle, but I can still change the position of this circle. And here let's assume I would like the center of this circle to lie in the center of the rectangle. And for this purpose we can also use dimensions. I can specify the distance of the circle's center from this corner of the rectangle in this axis as 50 millimeters which is half of this dimension. And as for the distance in the other direction, we'll specify this distance as 35 millimeters. And now the circle lies in the center of this rectangle. 
and here notice that the sketch is already fully constrained. The position and dimensions of this sketch are already fully defined. And now, to change anything, we have to do it consciously by editing the dimensions. I'll close this sketch and notice what it looks like. We have a solid with strictly defined dimensions. Here the length of this side is 100 mm, and the length of this side is 70 mm. And here in this sketch we used dimensional constraints. And we very often use dimensional constraints when creating a sketch, and usually in most cases using these constraints we can fully describe the geometry. However, sometimes there are situations, as in this case where I want this circle to lie in the center of this rectangle, it works with dimensional constraints in such a way that now if I change the length of this side of the rectangle, for example to 150 millimeters, the position of this circle remained in this place, because the position of the center of this circle is linked to this corner of the rectangle. Now, for this circle to be in the center of this rectangle, we also need to change this dimension. And here I have to change the value to half of this dimension. Now if we change another dimension again, for example I'll change this dimension to 90 millimeters, then for the circle to lie in the center of the rectangle, I also have to change this dimension to half the value of this dimension. And in cases where we design some part where we won't need to change dimensions, we can freely use these constraints. These dimensional constraints are very simple to use. As you see, we simply specify the distance between points or specify the length of a line. But there are also geometric constraints that allow you to define the position of geometry relative to other geometry. For example, in the case of this circle, we can do this in such a way that I'll remove these dimensions. To remove a dimension, we simply select this dimension and press delete and now the position of the circle is not defined, and we can apply a symmetry constraint between points so that the center of the circle lies between two corners of the rectangle. For this purpose, we select one corner of the rectangle, we select the second corner of the rectangle lying on the same diagonal, and we select the center of the circle and choose the symmetry constraint. And now the circle lies in the center of the rectangle. We have the same thing we had with dimensional constraints, but this has the advantage that now when I change the length of the rectangle side, the position of the circle will also be changed. The position of this circle is defined in such a way that the center of the circle always lies between two vertices of the rectangle. And now, regardless of what the length of the rectangle's side will be, the circle will always lie in the center of the rectangle and in this case, the hole will be in the center of the solid. And this was one of those basic geometric constraints. As you see, we have several other constraints here, and in this video I want to draw attention to the fact that there is such a thing as constraints, and that sometimes by using geometric constraints, we can create a slightly better sketch than if we used dimensional constraints. Because later, if we need to introduce some changes to the sketch, Using geometric constraints can make it easier and faster to introduce changes, because just as in this case, if the dimensions of the rectangle change, I simply change only the dimensions of the rectangle. I don't have to specify the distance of the circle's center from the selected geometry of the rectangle here. And as I mentioned, we have significantly more of these geometric constraints here. And now, for example, I'll create a second circle, for example, in this place, and I'll create another circle in this place. I'll now right-click to cancel the circle drawing command, and sometimes to define the position of some geometry, we can use both dimensional constraints and geometric constraints. And for example, I would like the center of this circle to be offset from this edge by 25 millimeters. So I select this point, I select this point, I press the D key to activate dimensioning, and here I specify the distance as 25. We'll do the same with the center of this circle, and here we'll specify the distance from this edge of the rectangle, and here we'll also enter 25. OK, I'll right-click to cancel dimensioning, and now I would like the centers of these two circles to lie at the same height as the center of this circle. And we can also do this using a constraint. I'll change the position of this circle. And now I select this point, I select this point, and here we have the constraint horizontal vertical constraint. If we expand this, we have these constraints broken down into constraint horizontal and constraint vertical. And here, if we choose this constraint, 
the constraint that is closer will be applied, and in this case, FreeCAD placed the center of this circle in such a way that the centers of these two circles lie on one horizontal line, and we can do the same in this case. We select these two points, we choose this constraint, and now these circles lie on one horizontal line. As for the diameter of the circles, we can dimension the diameter of these circles, and let's assume I would like all diameters to be 20 millimeters. And OK, here we have these diameters dimensioned, and OK, I'll right click to cancel dimensioning. And now all circles have a diameter of 20 millimeters. The distances of the circles are defined from the edges of the rectangle. And now when I change the dimensions of the rectangle, these circles still lie in the center of the rectangle. And in this case, when we change this dimension, in this case the distances from the center circle change, but the distances from the edges of the rectangle are constant, because these distances are strictly defined. And now, all circles have the same diameter. And now let's assume I need to change the diameter of these circles from 20 to 15 millimeters. And as you see, I have to do this for each circle. And in the case of three circles, this is doable. It's not difficult. We can do this easily. But if there were more of these circles, changing diameters can be time-consuming. And by changing such dimensions manually, we're exposed to making a mistake. In this case, we can also apply a geometric constraint. I'll remove the dimensions from these two circles. Here the diameters of these circles are not defined and we can apply an equality constraint between geometries. I select this circle, I select this circle, I select this circle, and I choose the equality constraint. And now the diameters of these circles are equal. And now by changing the diameter of one circle, all diameters will be changed. And here I don't want to discuss all constraints. I just want to draw attention to the fact that we have dimensional constraints and geometric constraints. And in many cases, dimensional constraints may be completely sufficient to correctly describe a sketch. But in some cases, it may be better to use geometric constraints because it can make it easier and faster. Firstly, to create a sketch and secondly, to introduce changes. And we'll end this video here. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to this channel.